Hi, I'm uh, Dick Turmus. I'm here at Arts on Grand Gallery in Spencer. And uh, we're putting up a show of mine, uh, 24 pieces uh, that should be kind of spectacular. You can see them spinning here. We're still in process, so we don't have all of them up yet. But uh, by tomorrow, the opening, you'll uh, be able to see 24 different pieces spinning in front of you. This will be up till the 14th of November. Yeah, it should give people a lot of time to come over. You know, I've been painting on a spherical canvas for over 50 years, <laughs> which is crazy. But, uh, uh, and what got me started on it was I wanted to get the total picture. Uh, I wanted everything, uh, you know, I was looking at complete environments that I wanted to capture rather than little pieces of the world. And so I actually wanted a, a, a canvas that would allow me to do everything above me, below me, and all the way around me. And so when I finally was playing with perspective, and I came, pushed the perspective until it ended up at six point perspective, and that's what fits on the sphere. Uh, you can kind of see it with this particular piece. This is also transparent, so it's a little more complicated yet, but it has, Everything, uh, uh, if this is a north direction, south is on the back side, and it takes six different systems of perspective to get all of these lines to go to make it look like a normal world. And that's, that's what interested me, and that's why I got onto the sphere. I later got into the geometry of the sphere too, and, and just uh, being aware that the sphere allows you to talk about stuff that the flat surface doesn't get, to, that you can't talk about on the flat. So I have explored all of those kinds of things, including the geometry of the sphere, uh, realizing that it's a whole different package than the flat surface too. And most math, math people know that already, but it was, it was brand new to me. So I was exploring, and you'll see as we look through this, a lot of it deals with geometrical systems. And I can give you a little tour of what we have up so far. Sure. Okay, because uh, this one uh, that we were looking at, I was, I'm dealing, some of my spheres are transparent. So you get to look, uh, if you move way in and suck right into that window, you'll look inside the sphere and you'll be able to see that you're looking at an inside room and, it's, and it opens up a lot so that you can see it from all kinds of different angles. Uh, and the idea is that I paint it on the outside. You can see that little table full of people, but then the same table full of people see show up when you look inside like that. I'm hoping you're seeing that, <laughs> okay? So, it, and it's much more normal when you look on the inside of the ball. So that's kind of what I do, I paint, on the outside, I paint it as though I'm painting it on the inside of the ball. This is uh, Shakespeare's Globe Theater. It has a lot of Shakespeare's plays going on, and it's uh, uh, Shakespeare's Globe Theater in London that I actually took on. So this is the way the whole scene wraps around you. It's a cylindrical uh, stage, or theater, that you look in at the stage inside the cylinder. And then all the, a lot, lot of drama going on down below too. So that, that was a fun one to get to do. I do a lot of very famous places. There's uh, another one I'll show you in a second from northern Paris too. This is, this is a geometry though, kind of stuff that I like to get into, the geometry of the sphere. And you, you, stuff that looks interesting on the flat, once you apply it to the sphere, does a whole different thing. And that's what excites me, is to, and imagine being in that environment too, that would be really fun, having that all around you. And, um, and we do later, we're gonna put together, we have a virtual program where we actually virtually are inside these spheres with your goggles and stuff, you can, you can see, see that. But uh, that's not gonna be part of the show here, but it soon will be part of the shows. This is, a, here's a fun one over here. This is called <clears throat> Dancing Against Time. I'm gonna just spin it just a little bit faster so, so you can see how the people are holding hands and dancing. And you can see the back of them here, 
but once it gets around over to this side, you see the front of their face. So it's a dimensional people that we're seeing. And the idea behind it is, is if you have friendship and you dance hard, it's centrifugal force will keep you from falling into that very evil spiral that's down below. So that's sucking you in all the time. And we all know what that means. I mean, we all deal with, with problems in life and that's, we all have to deal with it. And friendship really helps. So that's, uh, and this is interesting because this is all painted on the outside. I paint the faces of the people on here first, paint over it with white, and then paint the back of them. And that's how I actually created this. I didn't have to get inside the ball to do this at all, because it's just working with the transparentness makes that work that way. So that's kind of a fun one to look at. And I hope you'll come down and look at all of these. This, this one I love, this is one of my favorites. Of, uh, it's, uh, they're all motorized, so I actually shouldn't be spinning them myself, but I just do it, I just happen to do it all the time. But it's Saint-Denis in northern Paris. It's where all the kings and queens of Paris were buried and uh, for many, many years. And these are the gargoyles that hang outside. I brought them inside, but the challenge is, can I capture everything I see above me, below me? That's what's above you. Okay, all the Gothic structure up there. This is what's below me. And all the, uh, all the if this is north, South is on the back side, east would be here, then we're back to south over here. So that's my challenge. This, I've done many, many very famous places in, in France and Istanbul, I did a couple different places in Istanbul, did a couple in, in London. And so we've traveled all over to capture some of these, but a lot of those have sold, so I don't have them in the gallery. Um, this is a fun piece that shows kind of mixing realism and and geometry together. If you, if you take perfect circles and draw them around the center and overlap them slightly like this and then go to a single point, they get smaller and smaller and smaller and the same up above. And then what I did was played with that grid to find the shapes of these people. They all fit within those circles. The part I like the best is this little boy with the boat coming. You can see it's all circles all of this circles, but it turns into kind of a cool little scene with the lady with the umbrella in the back. That's all circles too. So a lot of times I, I start with the circle system or some system, geometrical system, and then I push it to the realism to make it pop out into a real world. This one is done that way too. But this one I started with, with the dodecahedron, 12 pentagons that fit over the sphere. And you can see these faces are pentagons, that three of them overlapping. And so I just, I found this little worm kind of creature in this little pentagon right there with this one stacked next to that one. And it makes that little shape that repeats its pattern but changes its color. So it ends up like, I call it three twins because there's, there's a twin for this one over here and there's a twin for that one over on this side. And it's, it's just a funny, fun one. So a lot, a lot of them really turn into odd, odd stuff, you know? I just kind of let my mind go. This is a fun one here. This one, uh, because I always tell people I paint on the outside, but I imagine I'm on the inside. Well, this one, you, you get this experience being on the inside for half of the room that's around you. And see that table right there? It actually chain, con, continues over onto the convex side. So it goes from concave to convex. And, and uh, it's on the camera, I think you will have a little trouble knowing whether you're concave or convex, because it, it kind of flattens everything out anyway. But that's what that was about. Was. And then some like this, this is another one that plays with the geometry. It, it, I started with, uh, uh, 5,210 triangles over the ball in a very particular system, tight system. And then my challenge was to see how many tight-fitting, tessellating patterns could come up, like the hexagons there that fit together, the chevron patterns and stuff, and this kind of a shape. And so I <clears throat> explored all the different tight-fitting patterns, and then the people had to come out of 
the triangle grid too. So they couldn't go on there unless they actually fit with the system. So everything fits with a particular system. And some of these are pretty neat, the way that shape came out. They, it looks very Picasso-y, but there's a good excuse for the distortion in this case. So that's kind of fun. And this, the dancers here. I love the dancers. The way they, they, they just has a gesture that I happen to catch there, I think. So, you know, that's kind of what I do. And uh, there would be a lot more of them if you come down and take a peek at it in downtown Spencer and, and check it out and see what you think. You know, the inspiration and every piece comes from somewhere, you know. And M.C. Escher is a big inspiration of mine. Uh, Bucky Fuller, he, he studied the polyhedron and the structural stuff. I live in like five domes at home, geodesic domes. My gallery at, in the Black Hills is a geodesic dome. And so I, I play with the geometry and I live in it. And so I, the people like that and you know, there's, uh, it's just a lot of it is other, like Einstein, some of his theories I've actually feel like I've explored in, within the sphere. The sphere kind of opens up a different type of uh, connection with science and mathematics. And, and I, I just love to grab ideas and see how the sphere, what it does to how it treats them, to treat the ideas, you know. So yeah, a lot of different places I get inspiration. These uh, opaque ones are polyethylene plastic, and they're they're you know they're made for light fixtures. They'd probably hang from your ceiling with a light bulb inside of them. Um, they're getting hard to find because they don't you know there's no real reason to have just a plain sphere. Um, the the transparent ones are made by a company in Philadelphia for me. A, a guy actually became my friend that uh, did earth, globe, earth globes for years, and then he produced, uh, uh, but he makes a really beautiful plastic uh, 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 sphere for me. And now all the transparent ones come from him. He reproduces a lot of my work too, for it soak screens them and has some in my gallery to, to sell and stuff. So we have that also. That, I was an oil painter ahead of the sphere idea. Uh, I did one sphere as an oil painting and then I realized that it takes two weeks for it to dry so I couldn't turn it. <laughs> I was sitting it in a nest and so I had to switch over to acrylics but now I love acrylics best. You know, it's, you can do so much stuff with it. They are for sale and um, you know, we're not here for, to try and do sales but uh, we always love a sale, so that's great, yeah. I just hope people will come down and check it out. And I thank you guys for coming over and covering this. It's very neat.